Blake, do you concur with all this? You haven't said a word. Uh, <laughs> there's no point beating a dead horse on this one. Yeah, it, it's pretty wide open. Should be a great women's tournament. So, uh, yeah. so are we are we predicting SDSU to win? I will. Travis, you will. Travis How about will. you, Blake? Uh, you know, it's going to be SDSU or Oral Roberts. Uh, you know, the way SDSU's been playing as of late, I mean, they're turning on at the right time. So, yeah, I'll take the Jacks as well. I predict that I will see all the games. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. I won't make any bold predictions. Uh, I'll make a bold prediction and go the Jacks to win. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick Oral but, Roberts. And okay. I, I hate to do it. I want the Jacks to win, but I think this year they'll overcome that injury. I think Looper will get Where's your fanhood stacking? I, Jeez. Where's your the bias? real story, two months ago, who thought they'd even have a shot the way That is very true as well. It will be Rabbids. interesting. The Summit Something League tournament. In, I what? thought was great was the way they played at Tulsa here a couple weeks ago. Well, they were shorthanded. They only had eight players. And Jill Young went off, you know, tied the record for three-pointers in a game. Yeah. And I think you know that was very encouraging, shorthanded, that they could play that well on the road against that team. That was a turning point. Still lost, though. I mean, Still, but, but, it's, but I expect them to get blown out, and they were right in that game. The yeah. Summit League tournament, both the men and the women, will take place March 5th through the 8th. That's this Saturday through to next Tuesday down in Sioux Falls at the Sioux Falls Arena. The championship game of the Summit League men will be on at 8 on Tuesday night on ESPN2. The women, I believe, are on at 3 on ESPNU. So hopefully the Jacks will be in both of those, but you can obviously hope that the Jacks will win, and it'll be a great tournament regardless. When we come back, Drew will be offset. We will be talking about the NBA trades, Carmelo, most notably Carmelo Anthony heading to New York. How does this shift the power from the west to the east, and do the Knicks now have a legit shot to win the title? All that and much, much more still to come. You're watching the Sports Lounge. Welcome back to the Sports Lounge. I'm Nathan Stacken. Drew is off. I don't know what he's mm -hmm. doing, but he'll come back for game time. So in the meantime, we're back to the normal four player. set, which is Blake, Charlie, Travis, and up. myself. We're going to be talking about the NBA. NBA trade deadline was last week, and Carmelo Anthony, finally, the saga is over. He is a New York Knick, as most of us all thought along. I picked the Nets, but that's beside the point. He is a Nick, and immediate dividends for this team going down to Miami on Monday night and Sunday, beat, or su Sunday. on Sunday night, excuse me, and beating the Miami Heat in Miami. What does this tell you about the Knicks now, and where do they stand in the Eastern Conference? Well, it says that the Heat really struggled to beat good teams, and the Knicks are obviously better with Carmelo. I think the Knicks are better. They're improved. I think they're in the top five in the East now. I don't know if they'll be able to get a record in time to get up into that top three or four teams for a better playoff spot, but they're definitely better off than they were two weeks ago. The Knicks are not a championship contender. They don't, I don't think they have enough. I mean, yeah, they have Amari Stoudemire, uh, Mello, and Chauncey Billups. I don't think they're deep enough. I think they had to trade way too much to get Carmelo, I mean, to really be a true championship contender this year, but I mean, they're legit, you know, they're going to cause some problems for some teams in the playoffs. Isn't it a win, though, for the Knicks that they only had to give up one first-round pick when there was a chance that Denver could have gotten four picks, four first-round picks from New Jersey for Carmelo? I mean, they didn't give up any stars in this trade. They gave up role players, in, in my opinion. I mean, they got a star. They did what they had to do. I just think it'll take a year or two to get some more role players in there to fill out the roster. Let me preface this by saying I'm a Chicago Bulls fan. All right. They're playing very well right now yeah. in the hunt for the one seed, but I'm fearful that they will end up as a three and face the Knicks in a 3-6 matchup. And even before they got Carmelo, the Knicks worried me in that matchup. But now that they have him and that win they had on Sunday night, I don't know, that's a very interesting matchup. Another one of the trades, we saw Darren Williams go from Utah to New Jersey. New Jersey gave up a bunch for him, Devin Harris, few first round draft picks is that a is did the Nets win in this trade to get Darren Williams from Utah you know I don't think they really did no. I mean Darren Williams is a good player but they lost Devin Harris in the process and not that Harris is as good as Williams but they're kind of similar I, I think they're in the same ballpark in terms of talent so you went from getting 
a B point guard or a B plus point guard to an A minus. I mean, I don't. It's nice. They're maybe a little bit better now, but they're still going to be awful for the next couple of years. Two things. They gave up a buttload of picks, yep. which is obscene. Yep. Darren Williams, I'm not as high as him as some people. He's, he's done a lot better than I thought he was. You have me kill Prokhorov. Yeah, he Prokhorov. Has yeah, can, he has lost some money. He has lost a lot of money. And the other thing is you don't know if he's going to sign after next year because he's only signed for until after 2012. So, and, and why would you, if you're him, sign with right. a team that is very iffy at this point to be uh, anything, you know, just a borderline playoff team? I'm going to piggyback kind of off what Travis said there in that I don't see how he's going to resign there. What did, what did they have? They had uh, – Well, they Lopez, had Brooke Lopez. Well, but Brooke Lopez is just – I mean, he's not a, a star. I mean, he, he's a good, solid player, but they traded Derek Favors. I mean, and if they don't have any first-round picks – They're he, hoping to get a free agent he, here. They're hoping, but, I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy. But the other thing, too, with New Jersey is that they're moving in a couple of years to a new arena in Brooklyn – so they will be in the New York area. So that can attract some of the stars, too. And if you have a star point guard like Darren Williams, Brooke Lopez, who is going to be a, one of the star big men, at least that's what he's becoming in the NBA, you do have pieces. And plus, you have a billionaire owner with the profile of Mikhail Prokhorov. I like saying that name. Yeah, because uh, he's the only billionaire owner in the well, NBA. Well, I know, but he's, he's got 16 or $17 billion. They're, they're going to have to bring in another star to keep Darren Williams there. If, if they do that, then obviously it's a great trade for him. But with the but, Knicks, you know, improving like they have, they're just overshadowing the yeah. Nets now big time. Any other trades that caught your eye? The Boston, I know the Boston trade really got uh, Yeah, I'm a huge Celtics fan, and the trade of Kendrick Perkins, I, I don't see it. I really Why don't. do you think they did it? Well, they did it because Perkins was going to be a free agent after this year. They had already offered him an extension, multiple extensions, and he wouldn't sign it. So they, had the, they thought they were going to lose him, you know, so they figured, hey, let's get something for him now rather than nothing in the offseason. But Boston's a team that's in a win-now mode. Yeah, do you think this hurts their chances of winning the championship? Absolutely, I do. I mean, unless, I mean, Shaq plays well when he's healthy, but they right. don't have any healthy big men right now. They're relying on Shaquille O'Neal, Jermaine O'Neal. If those guys can stay healthy and play some good minutes at center for them, they're okay. Otherwise, I think it's a bad trade. Uh, another trade, not as big of a deal as that one because both teams are considerably worse, but I was surprised that the Clippers got rid yeah. of Baron Davis. To uh, Cle- I forget who they even got for him. But, uh, Mo Williams. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, you know, I guess maybe that'll be okay for him in the long run. But I was kind of surprised. You know, it kind of seemed like Baron Davis and, or, and uh, Blake Griffin were kind of getting in the groove together, and they're uh, offing the plug on that because I guess the Clippers don't want any success ever. Kirk Heinrich going from Washington to Atlanta for Mike Bibby. How do you see that trade working out for the Hawks? Well, I think they're going to be stuck in that 4-5 matchup with Orlando, so it's kind of a wash as far as they're concerned. Yeah. I mean, they upgrade a little. I mean, Heinrich's a younger player. Bibby's kind of a shell of himself yeah. now, but, you know, I, I don't think it puts him over the hump by any means. Like, like, Heinrich's, and Heinrich's a better athlete, too, but it's not like they're dramatically better with him now. Just going off of Blake's with the, uh, with the, with the trade with Boston, I think what Boston was thinking, okay, the Heat now have replaced Orlando as their main, and Cleveland as their main, you know, barrier for the finals. And, you know, Orlando, that's the one problem they're going to have if they face Orlando. But they believe that possibly, you know, just let Dwight Howard get his and let everybody else, you know, close them down, which they can now with their perimeter game. When Boston won it a couple years ago, they – Essentially, their fourth quarter lineup, they went small with James Posey with the four starters. Their thought now is, hey, we're going to play Jeff Green, who's kind of in that James Posey mold with the four starters, and that, so they can play small. That, that's their thought. But, I mean, if you don't get some healthy minutes from your bigs, and Oklahoma City came out huge in that trade by getting Kendrick Perkins. And I'm, I kind of like what Boston, I'm not as down as them as, as you are. Mm-hmm. I think they go to the finals. But, you know, the Heat, they have no inside game whatsoever. And they will, you know, win that series no problem if they ever face the Heat in the playoffs. Yeah. I do worry if they play Chicago with Noah and Boozer down low. Mm-hmm. That, and they had that great playoff series a couple of years ago yeah. where Chicago was nowhere near as good as they are now. Quickly to wrap up the NBA trade talk and everything, are we seeing a shift in the balance of power from the Western Conference to the Eastern Conference? Is the Eastern Conference now the more superior conference? I would say, yeah. yeah. I mean, they've got, what, maybe four 
four legit teams in the East. Is there? Yeah. And maybe there's what is there about four in the West. So maybe it's mm-hmm. balancing out a lot more. But well, I mean, it there's depends. certainly you more throw, star power. You could throw the Knicks in as a title contender, the mm-hmm. Bulls, the Celtics, the Magic, the Heat. The heat. So, and I mean, maybe think, you only yeah. have two or three in the West, the Lakers, perhaps the Thunder, and yeah. the, the, Spurs. And the Spurs. I think what this does for the East is it makes them a lot deeper. In the West, it doesn't make them very deep at all. Even though, no, they're, even though if you look at their... Watch out for the Timber Puppies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kevin Love have. had an outstanding game, but considering the West in the last you know, 10 years, have had the, it's been the Lakers and the Spurs. And it kind of seems dumb to say that it's not as deep as it once is because it's not very deep at all considering you have one of two teams going to the finals every year for the last dozen years. But with the East, I think it makes that second-round playoffs a very, very good basketball could be played there. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we will be discussing the NFL Combine. It's Blake's favorite subject. Some risers and fallers, perhaps, through the workouts. You'll have to stay tuned and find out who he thinks made the cut. You'll, you're watching the Sports Lounge. <laughs> 